yourself in here. That's a, that's a picture of love right there. Celebrating. 
And today in our text, we see Jesus being crucified mm -hmm. on the cross of Mount Calvary between two common criminals, one on the right and one on the left. Thieves, y'all. That's what I'm talking about. What are you talking about? You said three of them. And the very fact that Jesus was being crucified between two common thieves isn't accidentally, yeah, nor is it incidentally, but rather it's intentionally. It was a part of God's plans way back when. Yeah, from the very beginning when God had already set it up. I know I'm right because, yeah, over 700 years ago, before this event even took place, the prophet by the name of Isaiah had already predicted in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 12, that he, talking about Jesus, yeah, would be, yeah, yeah, uh, be, be now amongst the transgressors. And that he would die in the midst of sinners. Yeah. And now we see in our text that it's actually happened li literally. Our Lord Jesus Christ was crucified between two thieves. Why, you may ask? Well, perhaps it is to show us the death of God's love. The death of God's compassion. To show us that God is willing to go as low as he needs to go. Good God Almighty. To save your souls from sin. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful Thank that he's you, able to go that low. To reach down and grab you and I. And pull us up. Just a little bit. Y'all know the story. Yeah, Jesus came down. 42 generations. He was God in the flesh. And he dwelt among us. Y'all know the story. He was born in Bethlehem. Yeah, there was no more room there. Yeah, yeah, in the hotel, motel, holiday inn. And he was born in a stable. Good God Almighty. But let him pause right there to say, not only was he born amongst animals. Yeah, but now he's, yeah, he's dying. Yeah, amongst criminals. Y'all missed that. I said he was born amongst animals. But well, now he's dying amongst criminals. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He did all this to show us how deep is his love. Uh -huh. Y'all miss that? Every once in a while when I'm listening to my radio, I ain't always got it on the gospel track. Yeah. Every once in a while, I'm going to listen to me some R&B. Say what you want. You can't send me to hell. Good God Almighty. Yeah, yeah I'll have me some old school 107. Yeah, 101. He sweat had a song out years ago. Yeah. Called How Deep Is Your Love. Well, I stopped by to let you know that he sweat wasn't the first one to strike. Yeah, 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 that up. Because a good God of mine over 2,000 years ago, God had hit that note. Yeah, to let us know how deep his love is. His love is so deep that he let his own but God his son die on the cross for your sins and my sins. That's deep. That's deep, y'all. But God had his hand in the mix. Verse 38 lets us know that above Jesus' head, there was a sign. And that sign said, this is the king of the Jews. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was written in three different languages. It was written in Greek. It was written in Latin, and it was written in Hebrews. Good God Almighty. Yeah, yeah, and they, and they got mad. And it went, yeah, we're talking about the religious folks. They got mad and went to Pilate and said, can you change it? And just say, he said that he was the king of Jews. No, Pilate said, I, 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 I've written what I've written. Y'all know what they say today. I said what I said. I'm, I'm, I'm through with that thing. Yeah. Now the reason it's in three different languages. Why, why? Yeah, catch this, catch this. Why, why? Greek is known for its intelligence. Why, why? Latin is known for its government. Yeah. 
and Hebrew is not, and, and, yeah, yeah, Hebrew is known for their religion. And unbeknownst to them, God had fixed it. Good God, my that Jesus is the king over everything. He's the king over your intelligence. He's the king over governing yourself and governing this nation. And he's the king in the church house. God, listen, he's king. He's king over the philosophers. He's king over the uh, politicians. He's king over the preachers. God covered all three in one son. Good God Almighty, because at the end of the day, he's king. Y'all ain't talking to me. So this morning, yeah, I want to talk to you for a minute. Instead of two thieves, I want to present to you that there was three keys. Y'all talking to me? Yes, sir. I found that there's three crosses up there. Three crosses. Yeah, three individuals and three thieves. And if you stick with me, I'll make my point. Point number one is the first thief. This first thief was that smart butt. You know, he couldn't admit that he was guilty. He was prideful and very disrespectful. He had no intentions of trying to do right. He wasn't sorry for what he was did or what he had done, but rather he was mad that he got caught. And there is a difference from getting caught versus having a godly sorrowfulness. Also, notice how he, yeah, how he doubts, yeah, the unbelief. You know, who is this, you know, this Jesus? Tell my if you be. Yeah. What you mean, if? Sound like devil talk. Talking about some if. Whenever you hear somebody talking about if, questioning God's word, just know that's the devil doing some talking. Because in Matthew chapter 4, verse 3, the devil came to Jesus and said, If thou art yeah, the Son of God, command these stones to turn into bread. Something about that if when you start questioning God. You better be careful when questioning God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and even though they was in the midst of all these ugly words being yelled his way, cursing words being shouted back to him, Jesus didn't even mumble a word, but just listen to the negative sex and the negative things they had to say. Good God Almighty. And he, yeah, yeah, yeah. And sometimes you don't have to respond. To foolishness. That's the point right there. You don't have to respond to foolishness. Somebody said you better not come out and pray. Uh, I ain't say that now. Yeah. Point number two was the other thief. On the other side of Jesus, this thief had a change of heart. I know I'm right because in Matthew chapter 27 verse 44 it tells us starting off both of them was insulting Jesus. Shouting and scuffing at Jesus. Yeah, yeah, looking down at Jesus. But this guy had a change of heart. Yeah, yeah, look how he, yeah, 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 changed his heart. Right in the middle of the insults. The guy, the guy said, yeah, you don't, he turned to the other guy, you don't fear God? At all? Yeah. Now the Bible teaches us that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom or knowledge. Good God Almighty, this man right here got his wisdom not in Sunday school. He didn't get his wisdom in Bible study. Didn't get his wisdom coming to church. He got his wisdom right here going through the hell that he was going through. And every once in a while, God will, yeah, yeah, sometimes we have to go through some dark days to hear the voice of God. You can be on your pocket, arrogant attitude all you want, puffed up like you puffed there. But God knows how to inflate you and humble you and break you down so you can hear the voice of God. Sometimes we so busy hearing our girlfriends and hearing what our homeboys had to say, but we don't never take out the time to hear what God had to say. Here it is, this man. He heard in God's voice. Yeah, for our Bible scholars in here, 
This man right here is actually one of the first born again Christians that you will find in your Bible. Good God Almighty, how amazing is that? That God can change his heart while hanging on the cross on his deathbed. Looks like on, looked like he was honoring Jesus because he started calling him Lord, recognizing his deity. This is amazing to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he had he, he looked up and saw that sign that kept on saying King. Yeah, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Good God of mother. This, 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 yeah, yeah. This man first acknowledged that he sinned and was a sinner. Listen, y'all. If a person does not see themselves as a sinner, then they'll never see the point of having a savior. If a person never see the, the, the jacked up side of them, the dark side of them, their wayward ways, good God of my, they'll never see the importance of a savior. They'll never see the importance of having a desire to be saved. Let me tell you, self-help programs can't bring you salvation. Only Jesus can bring salvation. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father except by me. There's no 12-step program. There's no ritual. There's no chanting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no wardrobe that you can wear. There's nothing that you can do or no place you can go that can save you except through Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us all have sinned come short of the glorious standard of God. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Acknowledgement of your own sins is the first step of getting saved. Amen. Then this thief on the cross can teach us a valuable lesson. Yeah. That you can save yourself plenty of time. You can save yourself some unnecessary arguments. Unnecessary heartaches. And unnecessary pain. Yeah, if you just take responsibility, own up to your own actions and your own wrongdoing. Y'all ain't talking to me. You got to stop playing the blame game. Talking about, yeah, my, 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 my husband didn't do this, my wife didn't do this, my mom didn't do this for me. Yeah, the white man bothered me on my job. No, them all excuses. This man came to a point in his life I am guilty for what I've done. He was sorry for his sin. Yeah, not just because he was caught, but he was actually sorry, you know, against God. This man had a godly sorrowfulness. For the Bible says godly sorrowfulness bring forth, yeah, repentance, which bring forth salvation. Lastly, this thief asked yeah, ask the question. Can you remember me? Yeah. Don't you know why we go to church every Sunday? Why, Pastor Walk? What are we doing? So we can remember the Lord. That's why we do communion. It says, do this in remembrance of me. We, yeah, yeah, it's good to remember what the Lord has done for us. But it's also good to remember him in the process. This man says, remember me. And I stopped by this, this morning to remind somebody. Maybe your old classmate don't remember you. Yeah, maybe you got a few distant family members that have forgot about you. Maybe your old boyfriend or old girlfriend and dissed you and ain't looking at you. I stopped by to let somebody know there's one person who has never forgotten you. I stop by to let somebody ask one person who never stopped loving you. There's one person who never turned their back on you. There's one person who never gave up on you. And his name is Jesus Christ. And he's sticking your heart even now, right now.
Let me make this quick point. Jesus replied to him and said, Today, you will be with me in paradise. I want you to get this, y'all. Jesus didn't say, Yeah, wait till tomorrow. Uh, yeah, yeah, wait, 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 yeah, wait the next week. He didn't tell him you need to go down and get baptized first. He didn't tell you need to have your name on the roll book at a church. Yeah, he didn't, he, he didn't say this, and he didn't say that. Jesus didn't even throw all the dirt in his face of all the times that man might have messed up. Jesus simply says, this day, you got about I need to remind somebody, don't let nobody let you stay. I'll stop you from getting to the Lord. Good God of mine. This man realized I got that. I was born alone and I'm going to die alone. I can't worry about the other people over there. I got to talk to the master myself. I'm talking about the thief on the left hand side. I talked about the thief on the right hand side. We got one man left. Then let's talk about the man in the middle. The last point is the third thief on the cross. Luke chapter 23, verse 43. And Jesus said unto him, Assuredly I say to you, today you shall be with me in paradise. Good God Almighty. Yeah. Jesus, he is the master teacher. But not only is he the master teacher, he's the master thief. I said he's a thief because he specializes in pickpocketing. Y'all ain't talking to me? Now for those who don't know yeah, what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's someone who can take something out of you without you knowing it. Then you find out and realize after the fact. Here's my point. Jesus said today, yeah, I'm taking you with me. Jesus is the only thief I know that can steal you away from the devil. Yeah, he's the only thief I know that can steal you away from this old mean, mean world. Jesus is the only one I know that can steal your heart and even steal your soul. Y'all better talk to me. But when Jesus takes something from you, he always replaces it with something better. I know I'm right. Because in Isaiah 61, verse 3, he said he'll give you beauty for ashes. He'll give you joy for mourning. He'll give you praise for your despair. Yes, Jesus is our master teacher. Jesus is our master thief. I know people who call good God Almighty, him a doctor in a sick room. Yeah, 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 yeah. But he takes away the sin. That's why I call him a thief. I know people who call him a lawyer in the courtroom. But in order for him to approach you, he got to take away the case. I know people, good God Almighty, that call him a divine eye doctor. But in order for him to take away your blindness, he got to first, yeah, restore your sight. I know people who call him a doctor in the operation room because he made the lame walk. But in order for him to give strength to the legs, he first had to take away the crutches in your life. I know folks call him the divine caterer. Y'all think y'all can cook, but Jesus can cook even better. Because the Bible tells me he fed 5,000 people. Yeah, with two of them fish and five of them bread. But in order to physically satisfy you, Take away your hunger. He is our master teacher. He is the master thief on this Mount Carmel. Because he took away your sin. He stole your heart in the process. He's restored your soul. Good God of God. Jesus loved you so much. Good God, why he would die for your sins and my sins, he was still saving somebody in the process. Because when that man said, remember me, yeah, 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 yeah. He said, this day you shall be with me in paradise. He loved you so much that he died for your sins. And he died for my sins. Good God Almighty, and he gave up the ghost. They put him in a bar man's 
food. He stayed there all day Friday. Stayed there all day Saturday. Stayed there all day Saturday night. But somebody said early. Sunday morning. He got up with all power. I was making walk from I was making talk from Healing power. Saving power. Delivering power. Any kind of power you need, you can find it in Christ Jesus. Say yes. All over the building, we serve an awesome God that has stole many of our hearts, that have captured our attention. Thank you, Father. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord. That's what Easter is all about. about the resurrection. It's about our Lord and Savior who died. They put him in a born man's tomb. But on the third day, he got up with all power. If you were to go back to that tomb even now, all you're going to find is an empty tomb. Our Lord and our Savior sit at the right hand of our Father. He's concerned about your issue. He's concerned about your problem. And if he can save an old and dirty sinner on the cross, surely there's hope for you and I. The church doors is open. Would that be one? You might want to give that life to the Lord Jesus Christ. You tried it your way. You ran as hard as you can run. You might have a few dollars in your pocket. But if you are spiritually bankrupt, you need to come to Jesus. The Bible says he stands at the door and he knocks. And if any man yeah. open it up, he'll come in with sandwich. Fellowship with you. Communion with you. He's the one that can wash away all your sins. No matter how the man Can wash it away. You can't do it on your own. You can do all things. Will there be one? He'll take it away, you are. But he'll love you enough not to let you stay where you are. The stars in your mind. You can recommit your life to the Lord yesterday. Thirdly, maybe there's someone looking for a church home. This isn't a perfect church. We're not perfect people. I'm not a perfect pastor, but we do serve a perfect God. And then lastly, anyone standing in need of prayer, we'll pray with you. We'll pray for you.
Sunday. Worship service normally starts at 10. And we would love to have you. Until next time, God bless you. God keep you. That is our prayers.